today I'm going to explain trauma bonding. What is trauma bonding? Why does it happen? When can trauma bonding happen? And finally, what are the signs of trauma bonding? So let's kick it off with the definition. What is trauma bonding? Well, a trauma bond is a connection between an abusive person and the individual that they abuse. How does this happen? Well, this occurs when the abused person begins to develop sympathy or affection for the abuser. This bond can develop over days, weeks, months, and sometimes even years. Not everyone who experiences abuse, though, develops a trauma bond. Now, this sounds very similar to uh, Stockholm Syndrome, which is another specific type of trauma bond. While it typically refers to someone who's in captive, right? Somebody who's been taken hostage, they've been kidnapped and they develop uh, positive feelings for their captor. They protect them. They feel safe around them. And that is another form of, you know, psychological abuse, right? That's different to a trauma bond. Okay, trauma bonding is going to happen when you are involved with a narcissist. And in some rare cases, it can even be if you get involved with someone who is a psychopath or a sociopath, which is going to be extremely rare, but definitely someone who's very high on the narcissistic spectrum. So why does this happen? Well, feelings of attachment and dependence contribute to a trauma bond. As can a pattern of abuse and then intense love bombing, which confuses you. So you become attached. Trauma bonds are the result of an unhealthy attachment. Why does this happen? Because as human beings, we form emotional bonds and attachments with others as a means of survival. Think back to when we were children. Babies and small children need to form an attachment to their parents or caregivers whom they depend on to survive into adulthood. If not, they will die. And when we become adults, we form attachments to others who provide us safety, love and comfort, friends, family, and in this case, our romantic partners that we get involved with and we hope to share our lives with. Now, when your main source of support comes from the abuser, this is when the trauma bond can develop. So an abused person may turn to their abusive partner for comfort when they're hurt, even if that's the same person who is causing the pain. So you keep going back to them. So this creates dependence, right? A person may develop a trauma bond because you rely on your abusive partner to fulfill your emotional needs. For example, when, when we were a child, you rely on your parents, for love and support. Now, if your parents are abusive, they neglect you. Well, as a child, you may associate love and connection with neglect, with discard, with mistreatment, with abuse. So you believe that that's normal. And then as you grow up, this is when you have this unhealthy childhood trauma. So you choose unhealthy partners because you don't know what genuine love and care looks like. So this is why a child may not be able to see if you know, what they're receiving from the parents is actual love. If it's good or it's bad, they become confused. They become emotionally damaged. So the child may blame themselves for the abuse to make sense of what's happening. Because when you're a child, you think everything happens because of you, right? So this allows the, the parents or the caregivers, whoever is in control of continuing to be good in the child's eyes. And the child sees itself as bad and it keeps seeking validation from those parents or caregivers who are actually abusing or neglecting them. And that causes a trauma bond. So that can even happen with children, parent to children. It's very important. This isn't just in romantic relationships. So a trauma bond will develop in a, in a relationship in a series of cycles or patterns. So after your partner causes harm, whether it's physical, emotional, they make threats, they manipulate you, they blackmail you, they say demeaning, derogatory, nasty things, right? They go out of their way to damage you, right? So they do that to you, and then it's followed by 
a kind gesture or a romantic act to make up for their behaviour. This causes you to feel intense highs and lows and you become addicted to them. So this gives you, if you're the abused person, the hope that your suffering is going to end and then that one day you're going to receive that love and connection that you so desperately crave from your partner because they promise that. And this continues on a loop. They abuse you, then they're kind. They abuse you, then they're kind to you. It's up and down. Because the abuse isn't going to be every day 24-7 if not every single person would leave. It's intermittent. Okay, they bombard you a few times, then it goes back to being normal and then it's up and down because the narcissist knows how to play you because they're good at what they do. Okay, so that's how it happens. So trauma bonding is always going to be when you are involved with, as I mentioned earlier, someone who's narcissistic. Okay, whether it's children with their parents, whether it's with your siblings, whether it's with friends, other family members that you're close to, and obviously in this case, a romantic partner, because in this channel we talk about relationships. So now I'm going to get into different signs that you are in fact in a trauma bond, because you can break away from this, but it is very important to educate yourself on this, because the type of people that are prone to getting involved with a narcissist or being taken advantage of and abused this is going to be somebody who has low self-esteem. You are codependent. You already grew up in a difficult home. You don't know any better. You don't know what genuine love and care looks like. You're somebody who's very young. You've never had a serious relationship before. And if you're unfortunate enough to get involved with a narcissist and you're going to be in limerence on steroids because it's your very first relationship, then you're more likely to overlook these red flags. Then next thing you know, you become emotionally attached to them. And now it's difficult for you to leave. And obviously, finally, if you're somebody who's very lustful, you have poor control over your emotions, then you're going to crash and burn right into a relationship like this. So let's get into the signs that you are in a trauma bond. You let me know in the comment section if you can relate. The first sign that you are in a trauma bond is that you constantly worry about doing something that would upset them. This is what we know as walking on eggshells. You've seen them react in such childish ways, in abusive ways, that you can already see it coming. You've already observed a pattern in their behavior and you know that there are certain triggers. When you say or do something that upsets them or they perceive as an attack, they may lash out at you, insult you, throw things at you, hit you. They may hurt themselves to make you feel guilty, right? Or get their way. In other words, they enact some form of abuse towards you. So you've learned to just keep your mouth shut. So you worry, if I say this or I do that, what's going to happen? It's like Mr. Jack or Mr. Hyde. One moment they're normal, next moment it's like someone flipped a switch and they're a completely different person. They turn into an animal. They become abusive. But because you've witnessed that enough times, you know better than to say anything. And that is the first sign that you are in a trauma bond. If you're in a relationship, you should never feel like you have to walk around on eggshells. You should be able to have an open dialogue with your partner about anything and everything. Okay, people have bad days. They get upset. They say something they don't mean. They get emotional. But the difference is with some, a partner who is abusive, it's done with an intention to hurt you because they're narcissistic. They will go out of their way to be nasty with very little remorse. Whereas a healthy partner is never going to do something that is abusive. Right, it is just never going to happen. So that's the first sign. Sign number two, you go out of your way to protect them. Most of us are going to run away if we're involved with a partner who's abusive. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you're codependent, you've got low self-esteem, you're lustful, this is the first time you've been in a relationship, you're in limerence and you've neglected all of that. You've been loved on by the narcissist, they wooed you, they swept you off your feet at the beginning, they pedestalized you, you built this attachment. You are trying to look past all of the bad and focus on the good, which is just fantasy, which is just the fake persona they presented at the beginning. So what's happening is you don't run away from the abuse. Instead, you go out of your way to protect them. Whenever a friend, a family member or someone 
maybe that you're close to just mentions to you, hey, you know, things seem a bit weird in your relationship. You know, your partner's a little bit abusive. That's not right what they said or did to you. You go out of your way to defend them, right? Because you built an attachment. You built a bond. You're too afraid to walk away. And this does happen. You can develop such a bond that you feel the need to protect the abuser. Okay? And sometimes you stand up for the abuser against the people that actually care about you. You know, you have a worried family member. You have a worried friend. You know, hey man, what's going on with that girl of yours? Every time you come out and have, make plans with us, you cancel last minute. What's going on? You know, seriously, dude, stand up for yourself. W what's she going to do? She's your girl. You're the man, stand up. But you can't because you're in an abusive relationship and she threatens to hurt herself or she has been really nasty to you and it's just already hurt you enough times that you just cower. Your self-esteem is broken. So what do you do? You go out of your way to protect her. You make a big excuse, right? And if you feel like that's happening in your relationship, you're definitely in a trauma bond. Because you're worried that if you don't stand up and you don't protect this person, this abusive person, that more abuse is going to follow. Okay? So that's why you do it. Number three. You ignore their bad behavior when it's pointed out by others. This is very similar to the previous one. But in this case, you don't actually protect them. You don't actually defend them. You just ignore it. You pretend like, no, nothing's ever happened. So, you know, your friends and family may be a little bit disturbed by things that your partner said to you, maybe in a social gathering, right? They, a narcissist is going to talk down to you in public, talk to you like you're a dog, uh right, demean you, say nasty things. And you sit there and say, oh, it's not, it's no big of a deal. And they're looking at you all shocked, thinking, what the, what the hell are you talking about? That's terrible, right? Because when you're in a trauma bond, oftentimes, even though with your rationale, you know it's abuse, emotionally, you don't want to accept that. But because your friends are on the outside in, from the outside looking in, they don't have an emotional attachment to your partner. So they can see right through all of their Terrible behavior. So if people around you are mentioning that you need to get out of the relationship, you know, I don't think it's safe you be with her or if you're, if you're a lady watching the channel and, you know, your friends have told you, you know, he's hit you a few times, you need to get rid of the guy and you just shrug it off like it's nothing or you pretend you don't, they don't know what they're talking about, you're likely in an intense trauma bond. The fourth sign is when the narcissist or the abuser makes it extremely difficult or nearly impossible for you to leave the relationship by the use of threats, manipulation, or blackmail. Let me break this down. You see, when a normal relationship comes to end, let's say you're the one who's doing the dumping. You approach your partner, listen, things ain't going well anymore. I just think we're incompatible. I wish you all the best. You guys talk about it. She gets some closure. You walk away. If she misses you, she might beg and plead. She might fight back a little bit, which is to be expected because she had genuine feelings towards you, right? And it's still going to hurt you to dump her as well because when you're in the relationship, you had emotions invested. That's healthy. That's how a normal breakup is going to end. There's no arguing. There's no insulting. There's no threats, no manipulation. There's a little bit of a pushback, okay? But... That's just because of loss and grieving, and then it ends there. But you see, with a narcissist, this is much different. Because what's been happening here is, you're not breaking up only because you're incompatible, because clearly you are with a narcissist, but because you've been doing some self-reflection, and you've realised there's a pattern in the behaviour with this person. Not only has my partner been mistreating me, and there's been no change, but it's gotten worse over time. I don't want to stay here anymore. So you muster up your strength, you walk up to them and say, I want to walk away. I'm ending this relationship. What you'll notice is with a narcissist, they're not just going to beg and plead, which is all crocodile tears anyway. Instead, they will amp up the ante. When they see that that doesn't work because you've already made your mind up, they will now do what they did throughout the relationship, which was abuse you. This is when they will use threats. If you leave me, I'll hurt myself. And if you say I don't believe you, I'm walking away, 
then they may very well go ahead and pull out a knife, get on their knees and put the knife to their to their to their wrists and say, you walk out that door and I'll slit my wrists. And that can induce serious fear and guilt within you. Because now this is going to be on your conscience. Because you have empathy, you have genuine care. You're a human being with normal functioning emotions and feelings. So you're going to look at your partner, your soon to be hopefully ex, even though they've mistreated you and abused you, now you feel responsible for them. Now you feel, I can't walk out that door because what if they actually hurt themselves or kill themselves? Then it will be my fault. And that's what the narcissist will tell you. If I kill myself, it's going to be your fault. Okay? They may use other forms of blackmail. Okay? Let's say you share property together with a narcissist. They may, ta they may take something that is special to you. If you play instruments, maybe, you know, she picks up your guitar. Says, if you leave me, I'm going to break your guitar. And that's special to you because maybe your grandfather gave it to you. Okay? Or... Anything else that you value that has an emotional tie to it. They will threaten to hide it, sell it, destroy it. Um, or they will use things that you care about against you. Well, I'm going to come to your workplace and say that you hit me or you're abusive, right, to try and destroy your career. These things can happen. Now, this puts you in a place of extreme fear. Because now the narcissist is trying to use exactly that, guilt and fear, to manipulate you. They're using all these forms of emotional blackmail and what ifs to bring you back in. Now ask yourself, if someone really loved you and cared about you, they wouldn't do that. If they thought there was a chance to get you back, a healthy partner is just going to let you go, give you space. And if you regret the breakup, you go back. Of course, with a narcissist, not only do you not want to go back, which is obvious, but in this case, it's easy to see why. It's so difficult to leave. And this is why many people stay trapped for years in a relationship with an abuser, because this is what they do. Not only does the abuser resort to abuse when you're in the relationship, but when you make any attempt to free yourself, emotional blackmail. You know, I'm going to say you hit me. I'm going to say you, you abused me. That's what they'll say to you. They may pull out a knife. I'm going to hurt myself, right? The example I just gave. Well, those are some things you can expect. And these can scare you. And you don't know what to do. You don't have anywhere to go. Who's going to believe me? But let me let you in on a little secret. A narcissist is never going to hurt themselves. They're never going to kill themselves. Because they're too selfish. They view, they view themselves as godlike. That they're above everybody and anybody else. And why would they end their life when there's still so many more people out there for them to manipulate? It's never going to happen. Okay, it's all a lie. It's all phony. Now, obviously, there are some exceptions where it may look very, very real. And in case this person also has a form of mental disorder, you know, not just in this case a personality disorder, but a literal mental disorder where they're not just a narcissist, but they've also got BPD or other health issues, then that could be a problem. And if that happens, the best thing you do is, fine, I'm going to call your family, your friends, or you phone the police. That's what you should do in those cases. But most people freeze up. They don't know what to do. Because you're trying to free yourself from this person and now they're pulling you back in with more abuse, which is what worked to keep you there for so long. And that is why they do it. OK, so that's number four. Let's carry on with number five. Despite all the abuse they give you, all the mistreatment, all the nasty names, all the hurtful things they've said and done, all the neglect, all the gaslighting, right, all the silent treatments, Everything, you know, humiliation, everything they've done to you, you give them chance after chance after chance. Now, healthy men and women have boundaries to protect themselves from those that will do harm on them. Now, when you find yourself in a relationship with a narcissist, due to the abuse, which happens slowly, right? It's like the analogy with the frog in the pot of boiling water. You don't throw a frog in a pot with boiling water because it's going to jump right out. But when you put it in with no heat and then you slowly raise the heat over time, the frog isn't aware that it's being boiled alive. And it's the same thing with how a narcissist abuses you. They're not going to start doing intense, horrible, nasty things within the first few weeks or first few months. It will start off gradually. They will test you a little bit to see how much can you take. And then they increase the tolerance. They slowly add more pressure. 
and then they know when to turn it down because they see oh they're pushing too much then they love bomb you a little bit more to pull you back in and then it's back and forth that's how the narcissist gets good at manipulating and abusing you now when this happens what hap what does it actually do to you well it wears down your self-worth to the point where you are suffering so much you are so confused you're going to do whatever it stops to you're going to want to do whatever it takes to stop the abuse so in your mind you think fine i'm going to try and love this person and give them another chance maybe that will make things different so you're willing to give them chance after chance even though logically you know the abuse is bad but emotionally you keep, you stay stuck there okay carrying on number six you hide your emotions from them okay this is very interesting so when you are in a relationship with someone that's narcissistic that's abusing you after like a few intense sessions maybe over the course of a few months or if even a few years of abuse obviously we all live our lives you know things happen with our families with our friends with our careers with our businesses things that we're going through now what will happen is you will start to emotionally distance yourself in some ways even though you may physically be close with a narcissist through sex and there may be times where you guys do talk because they will be stable in some cases right in in some in some days some weeks okay they can't bombard you every single second with abuse or you would leave so in those moments where they're normal you will find that you don't feel comfortable sharing things with them anymore whereas at the beginning of the relationship when they were love bombing you you would so let's say you start a new business or you've had a promotion at work or you know whatever something that's been important to you like let's say you put on weight and you finally lost a few pounds and you've made progress typically you'd want to share happy news with your partner with someone you love well now you don't feel like doing that now you withdraw now you keep your emotions to yourself so anything good and even things bad that are happening to you that are outside of between you and your partner you won't want to share it with them because now you don't feel like you can trust them with sensitive information because you fear that they may use that against you or humiliate you or just throw that into the next session of abuse Okay, that's number six. Number seven, you feel addicted to them. So you develop an addiction that's not just psychological but biochemical. Now this is this has been studied with research that has been done over the last few years in which it shows that bonding bonding occurs in abuse because you become addicted to the hormonal an emotional roller coaster that the abuser puts you on so even if the abuse is bad this you know the love and attention you get afterwards feels good to the point where you just almost momentarily forget that you ever abused so it's like this up and down so the russian stress that they cause you when they abuse you which is cortisol adrenaline puts you in fight or flight and then afterwards it's followed by a flood of feel good chemicals with dopamine right serotonin the narcissist may use makeup sex so you have a physical release they may kiss you hug you afterwards when they give you that fake apology uh, or may do something sweet to you and that puts your guard down so what happens is you go through these intense emotional highs and lows so you go from you go from being literally fearful for your life to feeling completely relaxed and safe that's not normal and when you go through that enough times up and down this affects your your brain it rewires it to where you become addicted to the highs and lows this is another reason why people stay in long term relationships with abusers and out people on the outside say i don't know how they stay so long with them well because you're not emotionally involved you're not the one that's been abused and these are the effects it has on your on your physiology on the chemistry So it's very important to remember that if you feel almost addicted like you know even though they mistreat me I still want them you are in a trauma bond and this is why that's what the ups and downs cause Number 8 you always have an excuse for their bad behavior So in your mind you try to rationalize as to why you should stay by saying things to yourself such as you know i deserve this after they mistreat you you know 
you know, she didn't mean to throw a glass at me. She, you know, she was just upset because of something I did. Right? Oh, she puts up with me too. You know, I'm not perfect either. And you start rationalizing, you start saying all these things to yourself. Right? You may be wondering, well, you know, you know, she said she had a difficult childhood. You know, she, she really, you know, her parents never loved her. So I feel sorry for her. So this is just how she's coping. I, I can love her through this. I can change her. I can fix her. My love and support will make this work. You know, you see this a lot of times with women that get involved with a man that's physically abusive in cases of domestic violence. Oh, no, it's because uh, I spoke back to him and he was upset at me. And then they get beaten up by the husband. The police come and they, she says, oh, it's nothing. I fell over. And then later she tells her girlfriends, oh, you know, it was nothing. You know, he, you know, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have spoken back to him. Right. I shouldn't have said anything that would have upset him. And they're looking at her thinking, what are you on about? You need to get out. This is one of the after effects of trauma abuse. You find yourself rationalizing all these different reasons how their behavior is somehow not their fault. That you have some blame in this or some play in this. When you don't, it's never your fault. You know, so you try and want to, you want to change them. You want to fix them. You know, oh, she puts up with me. You know, she didn't really mean that. You know, I know she said that, you know, she hopes I die and that I'm a loser and I'm a nobody. You know, whatever horrible, nasty thing the narcissist has said to you, despite that you say, well, she doesn't really mean it. So you give yourself these different reasons, right, as to why you should stay. So this is, a, this is a telltale sign that you are, in fact, trauma bonded. Because now you're protecting, you're defending them. And you rationalize it to yourself, not just to others. Okay? So you think, fine, they're abusing me because of things that I've said and done. I've caused this. That causes you to stay because it plays on guilt and shame. Number nine, you compromise yourself to please them. Now, one thing that happens when you've been with an abuser for a long period of time is that your self-esteem will simply just evaporate. Slowly but steadily, it will disappear. They suck it out of you. So it's almost like you become programmed to hate yourself or feel like you're unworthy. Because when you first met them, you were confident, you were strong, you had this glow about you, you would smile, you'd work out, you'd have your friends and your hobbies. You were this happy, go lucky guy. You had a complete life, you were fulfilled. And now you've brought this partner into your life and now you feel stuck. You feel helpless. You feel like nothing's good, that this is the way things are supposed to be. Because what does a narcissist do? It's called character assassination. They make attempts on you with all this abuse to destroy you, destroy your character, destroy your personality and all your good qualities. Why? Because the narcissist doesn't have them. The narcissist is pathologically jealous of everyone around them. And when they are in a relationship with you, it's not because they love you, they're using you. And the narcissist is upset that you are able to love others and love yourself and love them. And they, because they don't have these emotions, it causes anger within them. So they retaliate, they take this out on you. So that's another reason why narcissists are so abusive. They hate themselves so much, they project that onto you. And they hurt you and they break you down. And what happens is, over time, because your self-esteem has been de destroyed, you start to compromise. You compromise, you give up on everything. You don't hang out with your friends anymore. You stop eating clean. You stop working out. You just give up on life. And you're just so sucked into the relationship you're just floating around and you just orbit around the abuser and you live to please them. Now you do everything they say because you've given them total control over your life. So it's almost like this toxic person has caused you to destroy yourself in a way and you just give up on everything. Number 10. This, the 10th sign is that you crave the crumbs of love and affection that they once gave you at the beginning during the love bombing phase. And especially after abuse, because now they've conditioned you, they've trained you like a dog. I'm gonna treat you like you're worthless. And five minutes later, half an hour after I've calmed down, I'm gonna be sweet and loving to you. And 
Remember what I was saying before, right? You become addicted to those highs and lows. And this is part of it. You now crave what comes after the abuse, which is little, the crumbs they sprinkle. You know, like, you know, when you get to the park and you see the old lady sitting there feeding the ducks, throwing them pieces of bread, just like that. You're one of those little ducks sitting there just hoping, you know, you get some bread. You know, and this is something that you might see, for example, anybody that you know who has been or is involved with a narcissist, you will notice after they have a little breakup and the narcissist comes back or there's a small separation for a few weeks or a month, you know, they will be elated. They will be so happy that the abuser is coming back to them, even though you're looking at it thinking, dude, why are you getting back? You know, she monkey bunched on you and she treated you like a like you were an animal. What are you doing? And he's got a smile on his face. No, man, you know, I can make it work this time. You know, she says she's changed. See, he's craving it. He's welcoming it. He's almost looking forward to the fact that the abuse is coming back. And again, this is also something that may have happened to you. All right. In those moments where you almost break away from the narcissist. Right. So if you resonate with this, then you are definitely trauma bonded. Okay. Anytime you've craved crumbs of love and affection after abuse or after a period of separation, then that means that you're still bonded to the narcissist. Number 11. The 11th sign is that you doubt yourself, your sanity. In other words, you believe that you're crazy or that there's something wrong with you. Okay. One thing that you'll notice when you are involved with an abuser is they will always tell you that everything they've said and done to you is because you deserve it. It's your fault. You made me do it is one common thing you'll say or you are asking for it. Okay. Because in a narcissist's mind, they believe they have, you know, <laughs> some type of constitutional power or right to mistreat you that way. And here's the thing. Repetition is what's going to leave a mark on you. And because they've abused you 5, 20, 30, 50 times over the course of, let's say, six months to two years, for example, between that time period, what's happened is you've conditioned to believe, well, maybe, maybe they're right. You begin to question yourself because this is what emotional abuse does. Now you're wondering, well, you know, I've been treated like this so many times. Is it, is it maybe my fault? Have I done something to deserve this? So if you're in a situation like that where you start doubting yourself or wondering, is this my fault? Am I going crazy? You know, you are definitely trauma bonded. Because let me tell you, if you are with someone in an intimate relationship and they say and do things that represent emotional, physical abuse, they threaten, they blackmail you, they demean you, they laugh at you, they mock you, they gaslight you, they neglect you, they cheat on you multiple times. This is not your fault. This is to do with how they feel about themselves. It's all on them. You did nothing to deserve this, ever. No one does. Carrying on with number 12. You develop sleeping difficulties and eating problems. Now, this is going to be on both extremes. So in regards to sleeping, you will find yourself sleeping in very late. You will develop difficulties to get out of bed because what happens when you're sleeping? You're not talking to anyone. You're not working. You're not thinking. You're resting. And this does give you a break from the abuse. And due to having gone through so much, you know what's going to happen when you wake up tomorrow. At some point this following week, you're going to get mistreated. So the moments of peace you get is when you sleep. So almost like a reaction in your body in an attempt to heal from the abuse is to just sleep longer hours so that you can avoid it. But on the flip side, you may find that you can't sleep at all. The emotional pain and the fear and the adrenaline keeps you up late at night. You're on fight or flight. You, you're restless. You don't feel safe and comfortable to relax. So where you can put yourself in a state to where you'd be able to, sw to sleep. You just can't do it. Okay, there's too much going on. Okay, you're scared that something bad is going to happen because that's all that's been going on. 
so you will struggle to sleep. Now, in terms of eating, eating problems, you may either have a loss of appetite or you may do what is called emotional eating. You're, use, you're eating a lot of food as an unhealthy coping mechanism to gain a sense of control and comfort and security because you're the one who's putting the food in your mouth. Okay, the abuser is not doing that. And number two, because you are almost eating, eating, eating in a way to kind of give you that fulfillment and to fill you up because that's what you're lacking in your relationship. You're not getting love, affection, safety, stability. And eating food gives you a sense of comfort. And this is why you see a lot of people when they're in a relationship with someone abusive, they tend to put in a lot of weight. They give up on the relationship, they stay, but yet they pour all their love, so to speak, in eating. And that's what's in as emotional eating, which leads to weight gain. And obviously, on the other angle of it all, you kind of give up on it all. You don't even want to eat. And uh, you basically lose appetite, which is weight loss. And those are all symptoms of someone that is been abused. It shows up in your physiology. Number 13, you have thoughts of dying and suicide. Now, this is a serious issue. Trauma will affect your mental health. When you have been psychologically bombarded with threats, you know, betrayal, um, manipulation, shouting matches, all of this abuse can cause you to literally lose hope. And especially when you have no one else to go to, no one to run to, you haven't seeked external help. For the abused, the victim, you may feel like there's no way out and you may want to end your life. And some people in rare cases will actually attempt to commit suicide. They will, you know, try and overdose on pills or hang themselves. It's terrible, but there's many cases that have been reported. You know, there are situations where, for example, a woman, you know, she's in a situation where the, the husband or the boyfriend is, you know, physically abusive towards her and he's been doing it for so long and she can't take it anymore. And then the family finds out that she took her life. She was too scared to reach out because she thought, number one, it's going to get back to him and she's going to suffer more abuse. Or number two, no one's going to believe her. So she felt like the only exit was, I'm going to end my life. But there's always people out there to help you. There's different suicide hotlines. Uh, reach out to someone you trust, someone you feel safe to in the moment where the abuser isn't there and seek help. If, if you are having those thoughts, there's, there is people out there that love you. There is people out there that care about you. Okay. And there's always a chance for things to get better in your life when you move past this. But you'll never get to that if you end it. So if you are having those thoughts, please seek help. Okay, because we do love you. Continuing on. The 14th sign of a trauma bond is when you are afraid to say no or stand up for yourself. Anytime the abuser makes a request, asks you to do something or assist them, help them, buy them something, take me here, take me there, you comply. You become a yes man. Or if you're a woman watching, you become a yes woman, right? So in essence, you become a slave who feels indebted to the abuser and you do their bidding. Whatever they ask, you do it without question. You, you're afraid to talk back. You do, you're afraid to stand up for yourself or say no. If that's the case, you're trauma bonded because in a healthy relationship, you should simply be able to say no and give an explanation or a reason why you can't right now assist them with whatever they need, right? With a narcissist, that's not going to fly because they want whatever they want now. And if you don't do it, they're going to freak out, threaten you or abuse you. So if that's your case, you're in a trauma bond. The 15th sign that you were trauma bonded is that you rarely spend time away from the narcissist, okay? You're too afraid to leave home or be away from them with your friends or with your family because there's usually a price to pay. In other words, whenever you're enjoying time with your friends or you go to visit a family member or, you know, you go out with your buddies to watch 
the game or whatever, you are afraid to go back and see your partner. Because with a narcissist, they require your undivided attention. They don't let you have a life outside of them. And because you've, in essence, given your power to this individual due to all the abuse, they become comfortable puppeteering your life and telling you what to do, where you can go, who you're allowed to see. And because they're dominating you, they're controlling you, you're fearful of the consequences. What are they going to say to me? What are they going to do to me? What abuse is going to wait for me when I get home? So you rarely spend time with friends now. You rarely spend time with family. You kind of give up all of those things because you're on eggshells. You always have this... And in the situations where you are with friends and family, you have this deep urgency to rush back home to the narcissist, to the abuser. Because even logically, even though you know logically this ain't right, emotionally, in some sick way, you feel safe running back to them because you're attached to them through the trauma bond. So if that's you, be very careful. Number 16. No matter the contributions and the sacrifices you've made in the relationship, you still feel like you haven't done enough. So, and this is for the people that have been involved with a narcissist for a long time. You've given up everything. You've handed the keys to your life to the abuser. You've made them your only source of connection, of happiness. You've given up everything that you loved for this person. You've bent yourself into a pretzel. You've betrayed your values, uh, your integrity. You know, you've given up everything to be with this individual. And despite that, you still feel like it's not enough. Why? Because they tell you it's not enough. They still expect more from you. They keep demanding more on you because at the end of the day, a narcissist is a taker, not a giver. They show no appreciation. They show no respect or gratitude to have you in their life. And Since they're abusing you, well, then that's the kicker. They don't love you. They don't care about you. They're using you. And one thing that happens to somebody who's being emotionally abused in a trauma bond is that they believe that they're not doing enough. That if only I could change things, things will be different. Right? If only I make more effort, I try and love them more. Just a little bit harder. I just give up a little bit more of my self-respect to them. They will care about me more. They will suddenly stop their abuse and they'll start treating me right like they did in the beginning. And this is a response to abuse. Okay. It's not normal to think this, but when you're abused, this is what you will feel. So if that's you, that's another indicator that you are in a trauma bond. Okay. So that's the 16th sign. You doesn't matter any contribution, any sacrifice you give, you feel like you haven't done enough because that's how the narcissist makes you feel, like you are not enough. So you keep trying and you're stuck in that constant cycle of giving, giving, giving and receiving nothing in return other than pain. Okay, the 17th sign that you are trauma bonded is that you experience panic attacks, nightmares, Uh, You experience extreme emotional highs and lows, emotional breakdowns. You have moments where you just relive the abuse that they put you through. These are all symptoms of what? PTSD, CPTSD, which is psychological injuries that happen after traumatic events. And abuse and trauma causes the same effects of PTSD. That's what it is. So that's you, you start having heart palpitations, you start panicking, you start having emotional breakdowns. These are all signs that, you know, you're pushing the limit mentally, so to speak. Nightmares and such. You may even notice um, issues with your with your stomach, with your bowels. You may find yourself constantly needing to go to the toilet multiple times in the night to pee. Whereas before you never had to do that, okay? Your entire system, your nervous system, it's all deregulated due to the abuse, okay? One moment you're feeling cortisol, five minutes later, your body's full of serotonin because they're love bombing you after the abuse. You're up and down, up and down. And this causes 
all of that. And if those are some symptoms that you're going through, you are definitely trauma bonded. Okay. Number 18. You hide your partner's cruelty and abuse, the lies, the cheating to your friends and family. So there may be moments where you sit down and your parents ask you, how are things going with Jessica? And you say, yeah, things are going great. Deep down, you want to tell them what she's doing to you, but you're afraid. You're ashamed. You don't want to let them know that you're even involved with such a person. But deep down, something inside of you is telling, seek help. But you're too scared to do it because you've been conditioned by the narcissist that they're the only source of love through the abuse. So even even though you want to reach out for help, you feel like you can't because you're trapped by them. Okay, so that's the next one, right? If you do feel that, right, to where you need to hide their bad behavior, you make excuses. No, I'm not just talking about what I was saying earlier, to where you make excuses. See, you're making excuses for bad behavior when other people see it. Okay, this is when nobody knows what's going on. Nobody knows how badly they've treated you because it's happening beyond closed doors. And you have an opportunity to tell people, but you don't. You hide the abuse. You hide the mistreatment that you're suffering deep within because you're too afraid. You don't know what's going to happen if you ask for help because you've never done it. But I recommend you try it because people love you. The ones that are close to you, they want to help you. They want to stretch out that hand and keep you safe from that person. Continuing on with the 19th sign of a trauma bond. You become untrusting of others. Now, this is interesting. You see, when you first initiated your relationship with the abuser, right, they were love bombing you. You were in limerence. So even though it's not genuine love, you have been tricked into believing that you love this person. And due to the fact that they go through different phases where they abuse you, and then they throw a breadcrumb, they abuse you again, they throw you more bones, and it's a cycle of up and down an emotional roller coaster going from extreme emotional highs to emotional lows. What happens is, not only does this deregulate your entire nervous system, your body causes you know PTSD, and it hurts you emotionally, and one thing it really does is it affects your ability to trust in others. Because this, is, this was someone that you once trusted in at the beginning, and now they've taken advantage of you. They've manipulated you. They've physically, emotionally abused you. They've blackmailed, they've used threats. They've hurt you like you've never been hurt before. And what this does, it causes you to become untrusting of others. Not just the abuser, because you don't trust them. You won't trust them anymore after you've been with someone for six months, even a few months or even a couple of years, and they've been treating you this way. You will lose trust in them, but you also lose trust in yourself and with everybody else around you, even your friends or your family that you were close to. So you may notice you go see one of your buddies and you're having a conversation and you find yourself constantly scanning your environment. You're looking at different corners, you're looking at windows or corridors or whatever because you're checking, am I being followed? Is the narcissist looking at what I'm up to? Am I being watched? You know, you may, be, you may find yourself zoning out of conversations, thinking about your, your pain. You know, if your friend touches you on the shoulder, you might react and push them away because you're used to being physically abused. And it's just a normal reaction. Okay? Uh, your friends might make a joke. Because again, we all joke with our buddies. They make a joke, they call you a stupid name, they tease you, and you become very angry. Hey, don't talk to me that way. And they look at you like, come on, Jimmy, we always joke around, what's your problem? But because they don't know that you're being called terrible, nasty, horrible names, just the thought that your friends, who you've known way longer than the abuser, have thrown a little joke in, it reminds you of the very real horrible names that the abuser says to you behind closed doors. And it resurfaces those emotions. 
So you react. Hey, don't talk to me that way. And they're trying to defend themselves like, dude, come on, it's just a joke. But now you don't even see that way anymore. You see it all as a threat and as an attack on you because you're used to having your character broken down and attacked by the abuser. So now you lose trust in your friends, in your family, in any, not, and, you know, maybe your family gives you a compliment. You won't even believe it anymore. Because why? The narcissist says nasty things about you. They never compliment you, they break you down. So anything good that's said by your other loved ones, you become suspicious of it. And anything that they say that's jokey or playful, maybe teasing you, you become irritated because now you've got, you've got no patience for that stuff anymore. You don't know what to believe anymore. Is it real or not? Because you've been through so much trauma, now it starts to affect the way you interact with your other loved ones. And this might be as well where your friends or your family, even if you, you haven't said anything to them about your relationship, they will begin to ask questions or look into it because they see that you're different. So if you're in a situation like that where you just feel like you can't reach out to anyone, you can't trust them, you don't feel safe and comfortable, or you're just reacting out of character when you're around them, okay? You, um, you're just hypervigilant, you're on alert, you're easily, you're easily startled or you're overreactive to any, any situation with other people, then that definitely means you are trauma bonded and you have been for a long time. And finally, the 20th sign that you are trauma bonded is that reactive abuse starts happening. You find yourself lashing out, screaming, tossing out an insult, saying things that are not natural to you because you have empathy, you have care, you know how to control your emotions. But now you find yourself behaving in ways that cause you to feel ashamed of yourself. This is known as reactive abuse. Reactive abuse is when the victim, as it says in the name, reacts to the abuse they are experiencing. So then the abuser will retaliate by telling you that, in fact, you're the abuser. They try and put the blame on you. This is another reason why many people who are victims of narcissists feel stuck and they stay. Due to having empathy and a conscience, now they feel guilty. Because now you've said and done something nasty to the narcissist. So now you feel like, oh, I've got to make it right to them. I'm stuck in this relationship and how could I say something so horrible and be so cruel? I need to make it right. I can't leave them. And because you're so used to being uh, mistreated, you can't even distinguish what's reality and what isn't. You know, what happens if somebody beats a dog enough times? Eventually, that dog is going to snap. And it's going to bite the person who's attacking them. Not because they want to hurt them and kill them, but because they want to defend themselves. And they want that person to stop hitting them. This is exactly what reactive abuse is. You're not tossing out an insult or shouting or screaming at them because you want to hurt them or you wish pain upon them like they are doing to you. You're saying and doing those things because you want them to stop. And, now you're, and in, in essence, you're lowering yourself to their level to get them to stop. And momentarily they will, They'll, they will be shocked when you react at them, but deep down they want it to happen because abusers rely on this. They love reactive abuse because it's proof to them in their mind that you're unstable and they can blame you and they can use that as guilt to manipulate you. So, you know, they will say to you, well, remember that time when you said this to me? And you're thinking, well, yeah, because you were mistreating me. See, you're crazy, you need help. And they will convince you of that. And this is how the narcissist keeps you trapped. Okay? So sometimes abusers will use this reaction as an excuse to, uh, you know, even you know, call the police, threaten you, or tell your family what, what, you, what you said to them, even though they're the ones who have been doing that to you 50 or 100 or 1,000 times over, and you've only been saying it out of self-defense out of anger because you've been pushed to the emotional limit. So that is what reactive abuse is. It is nothing more than a way for a narcissist to manipulate a situation unfairly because they know that they're abusing you 
And that's simply what happens. Eventually, you're going to react. You're going to snap. On the 112th time that they insult you, you're going to insult them back. But the difference is, you will feel ashamed afterwards. You will try and limit that. You, you've never done this in a normal healthy relationship or any of the past relationships you've had. But you've only done it with the narcissist. Why? Because they're abusing you and you're reacting to the abuse. That's why. So it's still not your fault. Okay. Now, I'll definitely do this in a different video, go into detail, but that's the 20th sign. If you feel in any way, shape or form, you're reacting, you're saying and doing things that are out of character that that you've never said before to any of your previous exes in any other past relationship, then please believe you're going through reactive abuse. It is a defense mechanism deep down in your core that is basically saying, stand up for yourself and push back against this sick individual that is hurting and destroying you. Okay, that's all it is. So if you feel guilty or ashamed after reacting harshly to how an abusive partner is treating you, don't feel bad. Because let me tell you, that individual, that narcissist, they don't feel bad at all after they've been doing it to you for so long. And just because you've started reacting doesn't make you a bad person. It's normal and it's to be expected. But you want to be careful. Once you become aware from this, this is why you must always distance yourself from a narcissist because they will try and use this against you. And they will, you know, months later, if you stay with one, they will bring this up. Remember when you said this to me? Remember when you did that to me? Even though you've got a million more examples of how badly they've treated you. So don't fall for it. They will attempt to use this to keep you in the relationship. This will be another way by which they will guilt you. So if you make an attempt to leave, they will bring up the different times. Remember when you said this to me and that to me and I stayed? They will, they will say those things to try and get you to stay. Do not fall for it. Okay? If you've said something nasty, you've screamed, you've shouted, just know that this is because of reactive abuse. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay? So guys, on a final note, now that I've covered the 20 signs of trauma bonding, the only way for you to break a trauma bond is to go no contact. You cannot heal in the same environment that made you sick. The more time you stay on a narcissist, the more it's going to destroy your mental, emotional and physical health. You will break down and you will die. Literally, you'll be a dead man walking. You must go no contact. You must delete the narcissist from every area and aspect of your life. Whether you try and seek a restraining order, reach out to a loved one and get their help. Tell them what's been going on. Okay, because you don't want to put your life in danger. And if a narcissist is malignant or they're very, very high in the spectrum to where they become a psychopath or a sociopath, then there's a chance that they might do harm to you. But if, even if it hasn't gotten that bad, it will just get worse each passing week, month and year because they get more comfortable and they will always increase their abuse. Protect yourself at all costs. You must go no contact and delete this individual from your life. And that's the only way to start the healing process. It's the only way. I know the video is very long and I will definitely in a future video do an in-depth explanation on reactive abuse. So guys, that's all I've got to say for that one. It's been a very, very long one, so I hope you guys enjoy. Definitely let me know in the comments section below if, you, if any of these signs resonate with something you've been through. And if you have any more you'd like to add from your own personal experience, then by all means, let me know down below in the comments section. Now, for anybody that would like to reach out to me privately, whether it's to share a situation that's happened to you or to request a coaching call, the email will be down in the description. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, then by all means hit the subscribe button. I post videos weekly. And with that said, hope you guys have a wonderful day. God bless all of you. I'll see you guys in the next one.